Hello everyone, welcome to the Twisted DNA. Today we're going to talk about colony PCR. So colony PCR is one of the methods to verify the presence of a desired genetic construct by rapidly screening bacterial colonies. So let's take a look at the workflow of this method. So the first step would be to perform a molecular cloning using any of the cloning techniques that you're familiar with. This could include ligation, restriction digestion, um, half assembly, Gibson assembly, or any other technique. After the successful cloning, you would transform the desired plasmid into a bacteria like E. coli. And in order to grow the bacteria colony, you would have to choose a selection media that contains the same antibiotic as your genetic construct has so that the, um, it restricts the growth of bacteria that does not contain our plasmid. And after the successful transformation, hopefully there will be lots of colonies in our plate. And there's also a possibility that some of these colonies might contain self-ligated plasmid. And if this is the case, then of course we have to screen these colonies by performing colony PCR. So the first step of the colony PCR would be to pick some of the colonies from the plate and resuspend these colonies in the sterile water. And after that, you prepare the PCR master mix that contains all the necessary components required for a PCR, like our primers, tag polymerase, buffer, our DNTPs, and then we would include few microliters of the resuspended colonies as the template and save the rest of the resuspended colonies for later. Once you have all that ready, then you can start the PCR reaction. So the first step um, of the PCR reaction will lyse the bacteria cells and after the PCR reaction is over, we can run this PCR product on a gel alongside a marker and then this allows us to identify the colonies that have the desired genetic construct. Okay, over here we can see that colony one, two, and four give us the right size band. That means these three colonies are the ones that we are interested in, whereas colony three did not give us any band. Now, these three colonies, one, two, and four, the rest of the resuspended colonies can be used to inoculate a bacterial culture so that we can use it for DNA extraction and this way we can have the plasmid with our gene of interest. So one of the most important steps of colony PCR is, is designing primers. So these primers could be insert specific or background specific. So for the insert specific primers, they are designed to anneal to a specific insert sequence and this allows us to give us yes or no kind of answer. So a positive clone will amplify a product and a negative clone will result in no product at all. Whereas for the backbone specific primers, um, these primers are designed to anneal to a site that flanks the insert site, a positive clone will produce a larger size product, whereas the negative clone will give us a very small product. So that's it about Colony PCR. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.